Hey guys, so what's been happening in the hobby this week? Well, I thought we'd have a little bit of a chat about Stormcast. The book has now been revealed. Um, I'm sure everyone's seen a lot of uh, deep dives on the book uh, from various channels and had a chance to sort of go over some of the rules and, and things like that. And I, I figured um, since I did one on, on uh, Soulblight, I figured I may as well do one on, on uh, Stormcast as it's an army I'm going to be collecting. And I guess from my point of view, I'm coming at it from the outside. I didn't play the previous editions of um, you know Stormcast. So it's a fresh look for me and I get to sort of experience it for the first time. So that might be useful for people who are, who are getting into it but also might be you know um, already in the hobby in some way so they they do already have some idea of one you know uh, how to play paint and so on or you might just be new and wanting someone's opinion of it <clears throat> outside of let's say some more experienced guys that might have um, I guess their view might might be a little different because of previous editions or things like that not to say that's a bad thing but sometimes those viewpoints can sometimes be a bit conflicting or um, you know uh, just because it, it's it's sometimes hard to separate out what's what's come before to now and even for myself when I looked at the, the, the Soul Blight book for the first time I certainly had a view of Undead that was coming from a very very old view of Undead from like you know Warhammer Fantasy days and this is obviously Age of Sigmar is a different game and you know the Undead in that game are, are, are a different type of army so you've got to sort of come at it with fresh eyes and see where the positives are and see where the good side is so that you can actually get more out of your hobby because that's the whole point right um, and you know so there are definitely some positives uh, my thoughts on on the new book um, I guess originally it was sort of felt a little bit a bit like the soul blight how that I felt like there might be something missing but actually going through this book and seeing all the different units and all of those things uh, discounting obviously the fact that there are old units that have lost abilities and so on which is a you know obviously a, a negative in some ways but ultimately I feel like it's not the case that the book only uh, supports new new models and doesn't support old. I think there's a mix in there and um, from an outsider looking in there's actually like quite a few cool things in there that I thought we could have a little chat about. So while I do that we're going to be uh, painting up one of these uh, new annihilators here in, in my uh, custom color scheme. Um, I'll leave a link up, up in the top right hand corner there for um, uh, some of my videos, the Vindicta one, you can watch that if you want to see me actually talk about the process but in this one we're just going to have some sped up footage as I paint it and I'll leave all the links to all the other Stormcast videos that I do on the channel uh, in the description if you're really interested in this particular scheme. Just to give you an idea it's been black undercoated uh, then with the Rune Lord brass uh, Citadel spray sprayed and then we're going to go through and do a bunch of like color glazes and so on to um, bump up the, the, the overall uh, I guess depth of that metallic. So anyway it should be uh, fun so let's get into this and talk about Stormcast eh? So yeah I guess where to begin well I, I suppose you know when when this army was you know I guess we're all waiting for this army to come out you know we're all thinking okay it's going to be like sort of like the space marines of the fantasy world or that's the general view I guess from before as well and um, that's certainly what I was expecting now I, I think the book actually um, isn't quite like that which is interesting and at first I was like oh maybe that's not as cool as what I was thinking it was going to be and only because um, Space Marine Army for instance or I'm going to do a bit of comparison here between that just because I feel like that's that's kind of a valid a valid thing and uh, actually a lot of the things that I have I guess let's say on the con side or the negative side would be to do is with more thematic aspects of, of the book which is actually very similar to my thoughts on the soul blight um, I, I feel like from a rules point of view this book is actually quite fine and sits comfortably amongst uh, what is now I guess three new books if you include soul blight with the orcs and 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 uh, stormcast I feel like that they all seem to follow a theme and um, a certain power level I guess and it all kind of feels about the same um, but in comparative terms the Soul Blight are actually quite strong so who knows what's going to happen when they eventually get I guess an official third third edition book or whatever maybe towards the end of the edition maybe that will change but um, you know I think most of my thoughts on maybe what they could have done be more to do with thematic things necessarily than rules um, but it is interesting to just compare and contrast a little bit between let's say 40k and AOS and you know what I think do, uh, Space Marines do well and what I feel like they could have what I was expecting them to push a little bit more and part of that is to do with um, you know 
aspects of design and and um, just character. So, for instance, you know, Space Marine chapters all have exactly the same armor, right? They're all designed with the same, you know, base frame. And, and it's an interesting thing that just a color change with a few key ornamentation changes and then some, um, some data sheets, some rule changes to certain units, very little actual differences, but um, somehow it, it just changes the whole faction altogether. Uh, and then you, you layer on top of that a lore and a background to that, which is totally unique from the next one. They, you know, they, they act independently from each other and that's part of their, 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 their lore. And so you can dig into that. You can make your own chapter, your own thing that has like its own hierarchy, its own lords, its own heroes, its own sort of um, whole way of fighting. And that's what's fun about Space Marines, you know? And, and, and when you paint them and you add those little ornamentation, those little pieces, um, it gives them their own flavor, even if the, the core stats and core unit units are, are let's say, very similar, it, it still comes across as unique. And that's a really, really um, interesting thing about Space Marines, that they've managed to uh, maintain that throughout all the editions that they've ever existed. And I think that's what makes them so compelling. You know, there, there's, there's aspects, I guess, of the models themselves that are easy to paint. You know, it all kind of works. The stat lines are obviously on the strong end, all of that kind of stuff. And it, it makes them a very, very good first army, a very good one to, to go into because you know that it's going to be supported and so on. I've talked about these, these ideas before in terms of that, so I won't go into too much on those if you want to hear about those uh, listen to some of my other um, videos and you'll, you'll hear me talk about that stuff about choosing armies that are you know supported and so on but you know so there, there's all these different elements there and so what when you look at Stormcast uh, to me anyway looking at it from the outside you don't get as much of that sense of separate hosts or separate chain like separate kind of um, armies or faction sub factions within the stormcast range it all feels like they're coming really from the one place which is kind of i guess i mean i don't mind that it's just it's just that i didn't expect that to be necessarily the idea i, I was i was expecting them to really separate out you know the hammers of sigma or whatever and then the the celestial ones and all the like all the different sub factions that they have which i don't even really know all of them but i know there's what about eight of them or so um and you know, I expected a little bit more variety, uh, not just in, like they had a good chance with all, like they've got like something like 30 plus heroes or f almost 40 heroes or something like that in, in the book. And with all of them, they look like they're all coming from the same the same chamber or the same uh, storm host or whatever. They don't feel like they're coming from separate entities. Uh, and maybe that's just the way they're designed, I don't know. But I feel like they would be more compelling if they did actually have quite a lot of difference uh, in their look and so on, not just the paint scheme, but some little ornamentation, some pieces on them that actually are quite different. Uh, you know, so if you compare something like, you know, Space Wolves to, you know, Ultramarines, for instance, you've got that Roman look for the Ultramarine, you know, that kind of thing. And then, you know, if you take a look at Space Wolves, you've got all of these, you know, pelts and so on. It's They're only simple changes, but it just overall, you know, influences the whole the whole look and the silhouette of those models you know and and really the colors aren't that much different one's like a blue gray and one's a dark blue you know they're, they're, they're not they're not they're not really breaking any any crazy you know color theory things there they're, they're very in, in the same area and yet they do feel and look a lot different and so i think like that could have been applied to to stormcast a little bit and then what i really thought would happen is that the book would um be like you know like a core book like the space room book is and then they would do supplements for each of the the storm hosts or those sub factions so they would get like their own little book that utilizes the main book but has its own little flavor and separation uh, and really push the narrative that these are actually like really independent and unique sub factions within a grander host so that you could have your own hierarchy so the models that get released can have like different ornamentation on them and so on and so forth even if you made it as an upgrade screw or whatever you could do that um, um, because they have the basic frame, just like Space Marines do, it would be not very difficult just to add different types of insignias on them to give them a whole new look with that different paint scheme, right? So they're just some things about thematically that I thought would have been nice to have seen because it would have really helped you uh, take more ownership o over your storm host, you know, over the one that you're picking, rather than it just being sort of like a, a rules upgrade in the book. But I, I guess, you know, you can't have everything you want. But Having said that, that's really my only con with, with, with the book that I can see is that I would have liked to have seen a bit more, um, 
you know, um, stronger, stronger thematic elements that actually appear in design on the models that then correlate to rules for that faction, if that makes sense. So that's really, that's really it, you know, that, that's really the part of it that I see. But in terms of rules, uh, just straight up in terms of what you're getting, apart from that little bit of thematic gripe that I've got, uh, that, that I've talked about, not really gripe, but anyway, you know what I'm saying. Um, you know, it, it does have quite a selection. So if we go through, you know, the, the, they've made some of the old models great. The Celestine Prime, that that one, um, it now gets that four plus what's a which I, uh, I've sort of uh, become aware that it didn't have before. So that's a very powerful, you know, additive to to a to what is what should be, you know, a bit of a beat stick, right? And and it's it, it pairs very well with things like the Industra and all that sort of thing. So it now has a, has a place, and, and rightly so. You know, this range of models is not old, you know? Um, it, it, it would be a mistake for them to treat it like, like Space Marines. Yes, with Space Marines, you have models that are 20 plus years old. And yes, you know, you love them, but it's understandable that you'd want to move them on and 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 up and update the range. You know what I mean? That that's an understandable thing. I myself am a sculptor. I have my own brand, Blood of Gods. You can see it in the description. You know, I don't want to be um, you know just flogging the same model for the next twenty years. You know, I'm an artist. I want to be able to create new things and and design new stuff. And so there is a sort of a a process or a cycle with that. And so it's understandable they want to move on and and create fresh stuff. That's that's you know that's that's true of any artist. That, that's that's creating stuff so you know um when you look at that songcast range though it's very new it's like only what five years old you know so there would be no reason to sort of legend out much of this range it, it should really still be very active and very playable there's no there's no reason to overly push the new stuff when it would i would imagine that they've already paid back the molds that they made for all of that stuff they it's probably all mostly profit now for those kits so i i understand why you wouldn't want to have all of them up there because it's a large um miniature range to keep on hand in every store all the time so i get that you wouldn't want to have maybe all of that they probably have way too many heroes as it is uh, but you know the, the it's 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 probably uh quite you know profitable for them for most of those kits and that would be offsetting the cost of the new ones so you know overall that that range is probably pretty strong and and yeah it just doesn't make any sense to make them worse in the game when that really doesn't take any effort it's basically just adjusting points and putting a rule in here or there and writing an FAQ and you've instantly got a unit just like that, the Celestian Prime, from being a unit that I'm aware of that wasn't really taken as often or, or, or felt a bit lackluster to now just that simple change of adding that 4 plus ward in, as far as I'm aware, that's what it is. You can correct me if I'm wrong, but um, he's now or he or she is now really great in, in game and comparable with in points to uh, Yindrustra and so on and so it becomes like a really good piece. So things like that in, in, in the book are really great and yes there are others that, that don't quite get that treatment but they do still retain a lot of their little tech uh, you know elements and abilities sort of submerged in, in amongst all that and if you really start breaking down the book there is quite a lot in there to enjoy. And so I guess that's really, I suppose, my, my early take, my first look at this. I'll definitely do a revised uh, talk on this at some later stage to um, when I get more in depth with this book and actually play some games with it and see how I feel about it. But from the outside looking in, as a first glance, the first take, I feel like this there is quite a lot in there that I like. Uh, another ability that I think is really nice, which I don't know whether that was there before or not, but I was I was always worrying about the fact that what was the delivery mechanism for this army? Like, how are they getting into combat? How are they doing this stuff? How are they moving around the board? Because I was worried it was going to be a very static sort of army. And it turns out that, yes, it has those elements, but it also does have ways of actually uh, getting to where you want to be, and that winds of uh, etheric or whatever it's called. So you can basically do, like, mini deep strikes over the course of the game, not just when you come in, but you can then jump up and then land again anywhere on the board um, that's outside of nine inches and, you know, with one inch of an objective. So that's great. So you can basically um, move that unit and then quickly grab an objective if someone walks off it and so on. So there's all these like lovely little, little uh, maneuverability, I guess, abilities in amongst some of these units that, that can really, um, if you layer 
the combination of units correctly could make for a very dynamic army and i think that's one of the one of the strengths that's where i've seen most of the strengths is just that that ability to actually have something quite mobile and i'm very pleased that that's in the book i don't know if it was in the book before as i said i'm new coming in to to stormcast but i feel like that being there is actually quite powerful and considering that most of most of what you're going to be taking has a three plus save basically space marines you know Overall, the uh, resilience and toughness of this of this faction is very strong, and you can you can do a lot of different kinds of builds from from the outset that I can see. You've got you know mortal wound versions of this list. You've got mobility versions. You've got shooting versions. Even though you're paying more points, it's it's still pretty powerful um, because of that maneuverability. You, you know, and you've got your beat sticks as well. You've got your your hard hitting units that, that will actually give you the damage that you want to see. So I don't know. I, I feel like the the book is actually quite good. And so if you're a bit on on the fence about it, I would say, uh, you know, have a look at a wide range of of deep dives on this book. So don't go from one source. Give yourself a, a good wide, you know, look at a diff, different uh, content creators that are talking about this and your own friends and talk to them about how they feel about it. You know, with with, with your games in in your local area and that sort of thing, and get a better sense of it. So you're not just taking on what the internet's just saying, you know, uh, or whatever, you know, you get like a nice broad spectrum. And I think that will give you the best, the best sort of feeling and sense of it. I, I know that's definitely helped me. Um, I looked at, I think it was the last one I looked at was um, Vince's um, deep dive. It just was out when I'm recording this, uh, he's, he's Warhammer Weekly. And they had, I think that was probably the best one that I've watched so far where it was, you know, looking at the units with fresh eyes in a more objective way, rather than focusing on what some of those older units have lost and seeing where the value is in that. And I think that was actually uh, quite positive and a better way to sort of treat that book and, and finding out how you could actually utilize this better. And, and so that's really cool. So, you know, um, that's just some of those early thoughts. Um, and obviously the main, the main pro of this army is the painting, right? And we'll leave it with that as you're watching me paint this. I mean, these are a pleasure to paint. The, you know, uh, the new models and so on, and even, even some of the old ones, they're, they're just really, really lovely to paint. You know, if you do a metallic scheme, this army can be done in such a short time, but you can put as much effort into it as you want to, you know, as you're seeing me do. You know, you can really go to town on some of this stuff. If you want to see another one where, where, I, where I put a bit more effort in, uh, my last talk on limited palettes with the Indrustra, that'll be in the description as well, or I might be good and put it in the top right-hand corner now. Um, you know, you can see one of the centerpiece models done using this, this scheme, and it was a, a real lovely joy to actually paint that. Um, you know, you can do that fast and slow techniques, and so I think that's another area where this army really excels, and, and really where they've hit the nail on the head, uh, get Games Workshop up. I mean, in terms of getting an army that's like Space Marines, but I, I think actually more enjoyable to paint because there is actually some breakup of that armor and an ability to uh, dig in on some areas and go fast on others. And I think that's the best possible uh, scenario for, for army painting. You don't want it all to be fast. You want it all to be slow. You want somewhere in the middle, a bit of a mix. And so I think that's the main positive outside of the gaming side, the the the, the hobby side of this range, I think, is very, very good. So that's, I guess, my early thoughts on this. I hope you've enjoyed it. Um, you know, uh, I think what we'll do now is uh, take a look at the finished model, and, uh, and I'll give you my final my final uh, two cents on it all. But I think that's where we're at with it, and I, and I feel like, you know, Stormcast are in a good place go going forward, especially if the other books that are coming out are in a similar style. I think they're, they're going to be quite strong. So there we go, just a few thoughts on Stormcast, and um, you know, at the end of the day, they're just really fun to paint. So you know, um, this Annihilator here was just a, you know, just an absolute pleasure to to go through and paint. Um, you know, they're so quick. This is a great, a great. Uh, you know, process, everything's all metal, you know, there's very little other other elements you have to deal with. It's a great first, first army, and if you are considering Stormcast, I highly recommend it. No matter what the gaming experience ends up being, you're not going to have a bad time with the hobby side of it. The The range of models are just great, and I really think that the, it's, a, it's a good one uh, to get into. Whether they're the old models or the new, it doesn't really matter. Um, they're all, like, really fun. So if you are interested in this, check the, the links below, and, and you'll be able to go through the process, how I've done it here, because color glazing, especially for metallics, is a, is, is a really fun way to get into, I guess, the next level of 
I suppose, art theory when it comes to painting and painting techniques, because you're starting to understand how different colors interact on the surface. And so that's a really great one as well. So it teaches you a lot of things. So, you know, metallics, what can I say? I love true metallics. You'll see it a lot on the channel. So yeah, I hope you've enjoyed this. Uh, please hit the like button, subscribe button if you have, and I'll leave an overview at the end so you can see a, a better picture of this guy. And I guess I'll uh, catch you on the next one.